Hello everyone, Shadowlands is almost upon us and I know many people are thinking about what tank to main in the new expansion. And as requested by many of you in the comments, today I'll be sharing my rankings of the tanks going into Shadowlands. I'll be ranking them across different criterias, most of which you have actually asked me in the comments previously. Firstly, I'll be ranking which is the most fun to play, and next, which class is most beginner friendly, and then we'll talk about which class is best positioned for the Castle Nathria raid, before rounding off the rankings with which is the best mythic class tank. At the end of the video, I will also share my thought process for picking my own main, and which classes I would likely have alts with. Now before we start, I'd like to put out some important disclaimers. When it comes to ranking classes, it's always a very contentious topic. I would like to flag that this video is done as of the end of September 2020. Class tuning changes are actually not final even on the beta yet. So there is a chance that things will be shaken up going into the Shadowlands. I would update my thoughts in the pinned comments below. All the rankings here are my personal views and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Just know that I don't think there's a right or wrong when it comes to something like this because honestly none of us know what Blizzard has up their sleeves when it comes to tuning changes. For the majority of the player base, I think the concept of taking player over class still applies. All the tanks here are capable of completing content, and unless you are racing for world first, you probably shouldn't be losing sleep about what class to main. Now with that said, let's jump right into the rankings. Starting with which tank class is the most fun to play. This is a video game after all, so it's important that whichever class you decide to main would bring you joy in the next few years when you play and log on every time. I personally find the prop paladin the most fun to play. There is an inherent joy in being able to carry puck groups. With your Avenger shield, you can solo all the interrupts in dangerous trash mobs or bosses. And with Lay on Hands, Word of Glory, Blessing of Protection, Blessing of Spell Warding, these are all utilities that can help save a teammate that is, you know, unaware of mechanics or doesn't know what to do. And if you have been following my videos, you will know that Prop Paladins are currently capable of putting out one of the highest amounts of damage as a tank, especially if you have access to Divine Toll via the Kyrian Covenant. In second place, I'm picking the Vengeance Demon Hunter. And to be honest, I think this is actually a very close second to the Prop Paladin. Vengeance Demon Hunters are very very mobile via Infernal Strikes and that itself brings me a lot of joy because I do enjoy a very fast paced combat system. You are also capable of doing big AoE damage and this is best characterized with the new baseline ability Devastation which is a very rewarding ability to use. You can think about it as an eye beam for a tank. Not to mention a Vengeance Demon Hunter has very high self sustain and heals and you have lots of fun utility via the use of sigils. In third place, I have the Blood DK. To me, playing a Blood DK is fun because out healing your healer on the HPS meters is a fun mini game for a lot of us. It brings great utility in battle razors, having grips and mass grips, as well as cheese factor via control undead, which is very useful in the Shadowlands because of the undead themed expansion. Not to mention you are capable of putting out good AoE DPS via Bone Storm, D&D, Blood Boil. In the fourth place, I have the Prod Warrior. While it is true that the pace is much slower than BFA due to the loss of corruptions and essences, one thing that's fun about Prod Warriors is the ability to abuse spell reflect, and people who play 8.3 in the mythic plus scene would know what I'm talking about. As a prop warrior, you can do pretty nutty damage just by knowing which abilities to reflect. And in the Shadowlands, they have given you a new legendary that grants your entire party mass spell reflect. It is always rewarding to see yourself high up on the meters because you spell reflected the right ability. In fifth place, I have the Brewmaster. The reason why I rank the Brewmaster as being relatively unfun to play, it's because the core mitigation kit are passives. The ability to stagger damage is a passive, and you apply shuffle, which is the new iron skin brew, passively through your rotation. To me, that takes away a lot of the fun factor, although many people would say that that's a quality of life change. But hey, I guess it's a matter of personal perspectives. As a brewmaster, you are also very reliant on your healer for sustain, as self-healing is not really a thing with a brewmaster. The saving grace when it comes to the fun factor though is that a brewmaster is one of the most mobile tanks. Having the ability to roll around and use transcendence and ring of peace is actually pretty cool. And lastly I rank the guardian druid as one of the least fun classes to play personally. I think most of the tank community knows that the guardian druid has one of the most basic rotations and one of the common complaints is that the gameplay is stale simply because of a basic rotation. 
Now I think it's worth pointing out a contrarian point of view on Guardian Druids though. A few of my subscribers actually commented previously that they enjoy playing the Guardian Druid simply because the rotation is basic. And because the rotation is basic, they can actually spend time chatting with their friends on voice comms instead of worrying about executing their ability to perfection. Another subscriber even told me that they have a ritual where they would consume alcohol while doing keys and playing a Garden Druid is perfect for that because even under the effects of alcohol, you can still execute your rotation perfectly. So I guess once again, it comes down to personal preference. So that's it for which class is the most fun to play. Now let's move on to talk about which tank is the most beginner friendly. In first place, I have the Garden Druid. I would recommend it to anyone who is learning how to tank or is new to tanking, simply because the rotation is really simple to master and the toolkit itself comes with decent amount of mitigation and there are different defensive outs in Iron Fur, Survival Instincts and Bug Skin. It also comes with some amount of self-sustain via Frenzied Regeneration even though it is not as strong as BFA. In second place, I have the Brewmaster. I will rate it as quite beginner friendly because your core mitigation toolkit is all on autopilot. When you are taking damage, you stagger the damage passively over time. And also just by doing your normal rotation, you are able to apply shuffle that buffs your stagger. This is all done passively. An additional point of consideration for Rune Masters is that it comes with the Orc statue for AoE taunt, which can be useful to beginners to tanking who are learning how to hold down aggro when you do a large trash pull. In third place, I have the Vengeance Demon Hunter. I think some people would say this is a contentious pick, simply because a Vengeance Demon Hunter is perceived as pretty squishy. However, the assumption I'm making here is that the beginner to tanking would probably start in lower end keys, where the lower uptime on your metamorphosis or demon spikes won't matter as much. And in scenarios like that, the Vengeance Demon Hunter shines because of very high self-sustain as you will passively heal yourself just doing your normal rotation anyway. Not to mention, it gives you very high mobility to easily kite away from dangerous mobs. The challenge you will face is learning when to kite away when your mitigation is down. In fourth place, we have the Prot Paladin. Now, Prot Paladins always have this stigma of being a glass cannon, especially so in the Shadowlands where it's capable of putting out great amount of AoE damage. It is seen as a glass cannon because you're usually quite squishy outside of your Shield of the Righteous windows. And what that means is that as a beginner you are required to anticipate events ahead of time. You have to play proactively to decide whether you want to spend your holy power on self-sustain via word of glory or for your mitigation through shield of the righteous. That itself poses some challenge to a beginner. In fifth place, I have the Prot Warrior. I think a Prot Warrior is quite hard for beginners to pick up simply because rage management is not an easy concept to grasp. As a Prot Warrior, you need to think about whether you're spending your rage for damage to revenge or whether you are going to use your rage for defensive options like your shield block or your ignore pain. Not to mention, in order to master a Prot Warrior, you have to use Spell Reflect really well. And that means that you have to study encounters ahead of time to know which mobs or bosses to use Spell Reflect on. In the last place, I have the Blood DK. I think the Blood DK is the most beginner unfriendly tank because not only do you need to manage your resources like Runic Power for Death Strikes, you also need to watch the cooldowns on your runes because those will affect your rotation. And I feel like for a beginner to juggle two different resource systems, it might be slightly overwhelming. Similar to the Prot Paladin and Prot Warrior, there's an element of playing proactively where you have to anticipate damage patterns and in certain scenarios you need to pull RP in order to death strike out of a difficult situation. So those are my thoughts on the most beginner friendly tank. Let's move on to my ranking for tanks when it comes to raiding for Castle Nathria. For this exercise I assume that you'll be raiding mythic Castle Nathria where tank balances start becoming a bit more relevant. I think all six tank classes are perfectly fine for doing heroic Castle Natria and even mythic Castle Natria once you get sufficient gear. But anyway, let's get right into it. In first place, I have the Brewmaster. If you look at the previous tiers, Brewmasters are kings of progression raiding simply because of stagger. And this hasn't changed coming into the Shadowlands. The reason why Stagger is so strong for progression raiding is simply because it allows the tank to spread out spikes in damage over a period of time. And that translates into having more room for error for the healers when they're learning a fight, which then translates into less wipes over time 
And that means more efficient progression and time spent learning the encounter instead of wiping. Another minor point is that from BFA going into Shadowlands, Brewmasters are given Celestial Brew which is essentially a mitigation shield, which is not something they had towards the end of BFA. In addition to that, Monks are still the only class that brings the 5% physical damage buff to a raid encounter. I think Stagger is a really hard mechanic for Blizzard to balance around, and unless they gut the class completely, Brewmasters will always be strong in progression rating due to the factors I mentioned. Very very closely behind in second place is the Blood DK. And to be fair, I actually thought of putting them on the same ranking, meaning both are sharing first and second place. I actually do think a Blood DK has the potential to surpass a Brewmaster as being meta in Castle Natria, and we might see it as the default tank when it comes to the world first race. There is a possibility, and Blood DKs have always started off expansions in a very good place, because its base toolkit is relatively solid, and Blood DKs have not lost anything from BFA going into Shadowland. On top of that, they have given Blood DKs Anti-Magic Zone, which is one big additional raid CD. You can think about this as essentially giving the Discipline Priest barrier to a Blood DK, and I think most would agree that the Anti-Magic Zone is probably the strongest tank raid CD at the moment. On top of that, Blood DKs have always been used in certain niche fights because of mass grips, especially when adds are really important in a certain encounter. I think most guilds might actually consider pairing a Brewmaster with a Blood DK for progression raiding, because the Brewmasters is the undisputed kings in mitigating physical damage through stagger, while a Blood DK really excels at dealing with magical mitigation through its various defensives including anti-magic shell, anti-magic zone, icebound fortitude, vampiric blood, etc etc. So although I rank them as first and second, maybe the better way to think about it is both of them should share the number one place because they complement one another so well. In third position, I have the Prop Paladin. To me, a Prop Paladin tank has the potential to cheese lots of raid mechanics through Divine Shield, Blessing of Protection, Blessing of Spell Warding, and the list goes on. If you think back to the World First Race in Eternal Palace, guilds were running a Prop Paladin just on Ashvane so that it can solo soak all the bubbles around the room with its immunity and through Holy Shield which mitigated magical damage. And as others cutting edge guilds were progressing on Queen Ajara, one of the most common tanks they used is actually Prop Paladins, simply because Blessing of Protection allowed people to cheese mechanics such as Beckon on Queen Ajara. And that is why I think the Prop Paladin is the king of cheesing raid mechanics, simply because of its class toolkit. On top of that, you can stick a Prop Paladin on a certain raid encounter to be dedicated to kicking a certain mass interrupt ability. Between its normal melee interrupt and Avenger's shield, it can practically solo most of the interrupts. In fourth place, we have the Warrior. The Prop Warrior comes with a raid CD via Rallying Cry, which is very useful during high damage phases. Prop Warriors also have a new legendary that gives mass spell reflection to the party. And I remember reading somewhere that from the beta testing, certain abilities in the raid is spell reflectable. In addition to that, it has many defensive outs from Demo Shout, Shield Wall, Last Stand, and Ignore Pain is traditionally strong against magical damage. In 5th place, I have the Vengeance Demon Hunter. Now unfortunately, the nerfs throughout beta have reduced the uptime of metamorphosis drastically, mostly due to the nerfs targeting devastation as well as the demonic talent. On top of that, we have also seen some nerfs to its self-healing as well. As such, there will be windows where it simply does not have any mitigation, and it might struggle in very high damage encounters. In the last place, I have the Garden Druid. I think Garden Druids will struggle against big bursts of magical damage. Its big defensive CDs like Survival Instinct is on a long cooldown, and it only lasts 6 seconds per charge. So that sums up my thoughts on raid tanking. Once again, let me stress that. I think all 6 tanks are completely capable of getting cutting edge in mythic raiding, and this ranking really only matters when you're trying to push for rankings when it comes to progression raiding. Eventually with sufficient gear progression, all 6 of them can complete Castle Natria content for sure. Lastly, let's talk about rankings for Mythic Plus. I think it's no surprise that I rank the Blood DK as the number 1 Mythic Plus tank at the moment. This is also the general consensus of most people on the beta server. If you look back historically, Blood DKs have usually started expansions really strong, simply because the base toolkit doesn't require much secondary scaling to work. And this time round, it offers really strong utility via anti-magic zone that is new in the Shadowlands, and we all know how valuable valuable grips and mass grips are in Mythic Plus dungeons when you're trying to group up adds so you can AoE them 
and dull. Another factor to consider is that the Blood DK has a battle rest, which then allows you flexibility in terms of forming your party composition because you do not have to look for a dedicated battle rest. And I'm sure we all agree that engineering battle rest has its downsides because you have to be in melee range and there's a certain cast time, which is not ideal in Mythic Plus. Another factor working in the Blood DK's favor is that most dungeons will have undead mobs simply because of the theme of the expansion. And so control undead is actually pretty strong across the eight dungeons in the new expansion. Very closely behind, I have the prop paladin in second place. Prop paladins are currently putting up very high amounts of damage in AoE situations especially if you're the Kiran Covenant and have access to Divine Toll. Holy Power is back and that means that through Word of Glory you have very good self-sustain and even off healing for the party when the healer is being stressed out. Not to mention you have a lot of cheese factor in Mythic Plus through Blessing of Protection, Divine Shield and Blessing of Spell Warding. A simple example of this is tyrannical fights like the Triad in Waycrest Manor where Blessing of Protection trivializes one-shot abilities like Jagged Nettles on very high keys. I think with the removal of Shield of the Righteous on a 3 charge system and moving towards a system where you spend holy power to get Shield of the Righteous, Prop Paladins are definitely in a way better state as compared to BFA. Now in third position, I have the Brewmaster. But to be honest, I think a Brewmaster could potentially justify being tight in second place as well. Despite the nerfs to Celestial Brew on the beta, the class is still very durable if you're able to time your Celestial Brews well for high damage windows. Stagger obviously is very strong when it comes to mitigating physical damage, and you have decent utility via Ring of Peace, Paralyze, and the ability to kite mobs. One of the downsides of a Brewmaster though is that you have very little self-sustain. A Brewmaster is very reliant on its healer and that in returns limit the DPS output that a healer can put out because they have to babysit you so much more. Now in 4th place, I have the Vengeance Demon Hunter. And I think 4th place technically doesn't do it any justice. I think in a perfect world, I will actually rank Proc Paladin, Brewmasters and Vengeance Demon Hunters as joint second. The Vengeance Demon Hunter is very similar to a prop paladin in the sense it can put out high amounts of AoE damage via its base rotation, especially since Devastation is now baseline. It has very high self-sustain, I think only second to a Blood Decay, which then allows your healer to also pump out DPS. The only downside to a Vengeance Demon Hunter is your mitigation uptime might be an issue after nerves, and you might face some difficulties with your lower metamorphosis uptime. Generally though, from the second to the fourth place for Prop Paladin, Brewmasters, and Vengeance Demon Hunters, I think they are actually really, really, really close behind a Blood DK in terms of class balancing. Each of them have their own niche and strengths when it comes to durability, DPS output, and utility. I actually think that the first to fourth place are all relatively safe picks, and we will not know for sure what the meta will be because it's too early to make the call. However, this is my best guess as of this moment. In 5th place, I have the Guardian Druid. Unfortunately, I don't think the Guardian Druid is as competitive as the earlier 4 tanks I mentioned. The consensus is that it generally lacked AoE damage, and its self-sustained via Frenzied Regeneration has been nerfed coming into the Shadowlands. The only saving grace and why it is ranked at number 5, it's because of a buff to a new legendary which actually grants it a mitigation shield that is equal to 100% of your trash damage. And if you've seen my videos on it, it actually plays relatively well. In last place, and no surprise, is actually the Prot Warrior. And I know diehard Prot Warrior fans are really disappointed when they see this, and to a certain degree myself including because I made a Prot Warrior in 8.3, but the class definitely took a huge nerf to survivability after losing corruption, essences, and synergies from the redesign of the new talent tree. And that is why I have it in the last place in terms of Mythic Plus tank. Alright, so that sums up all my thoughts about ranking the tank classes across various criteria. And now let me explain my thought process of how I picked my mains and my ults, and hopefully that also gives you some guidance in terms of how to make the decision yourself. At the end of the day, it is important to ask yourself why are you playing Shadowlands? What is your primary objective? For some people, it could simply be I just want to have fun casually with my friends. And if so, maybe consider playing a tank class that you think is the most fun instead of the most overpowered in the meta. This is an answer that you will only know for yourself. I personally though am very focused on making sure I get back into the progression raiding game. I've seen Castle Natria on the beta and I'm really excited by it. 
As such, my main will most probably be the Brewmaster, unless there's further tuning changes. I will be main tanking for the Guild Roster and Mythic Castle Natria, and since my core main tank is playing a Blood DK, like I earlier mentioned, the Brewmaster and Blood DK actually partners really well, one being an expert at mitigating physical damage, the other being an expert at magical damage. An additional big factor of why I'm playing a Brewmaster is simply because we do not have a Monk in the roster as of the moment, so it is only through a Brewmaster can we access the 5% physical damage buff. So my main is centered around raiding and that is the first class that I'll be gearing up. However, I do intend to have two primary alts just so I'm prepared for Mythic Plus as well. And the first alt I will likely level is the Prod Paladin. If you've seen my beta videos, you will probably agree that it's capable of putting out very high damage output in Mythic Plus through Divine Toll. And there might be a scenario where I will be better off playing a Prod Paladin in a certain raid encounter simply because of the cheese factor. If there's fights like Ash Vane or Ajara in the Eternal Palace going into Castle Natria, it will be a really good card to have up your sleeve in those encounters. And also lastly, the Prod Paladin has a special place in my heart because it was the main I started out with in 8.3. I will also be dedicating time to having a Blood DK ult, and this is simply because it is perceived as the new meta tank for Mythic Plot. Having played both a Prod Paladin and a Prod Warrior in 8.3, I definitely experienced for myself the importance of playing a meta class like the Prod Warrior when you're trying to time plus 25 and plus 26 keys. It is at those keystone levels where I started to feel the difference and limitations of not playing a meta class. And while it is still possible, I definitely felt it was easier playing a prod warrior because I was capable of outputting much higher damage than my prod paladin. And at a plus 25, plus 26 level, every second counts. So that said, Blood DK is really for me to have a backup option in case it is absolutely needed in order for me to time higher and higher keys. There's also a big bonus here, which is a Blood DK comes with battle rest. So when it comes to class composition, we don't have to sit in trade chat waiting for a healer with a battle rest to sign up. And that basically is how I decided on what classes to play for the Shadowlands. However, do note that I do intend to play the other three tank classes casually as well. Although that will probably happen when I eventually get the time to level them up to max level, I do envision this channel covering all 6 tank classes in the long run. So the above sums up everything I would like to share on this very contentious topic of picking a main. If you'd like to learn more about each of the 6 tank classes, I've also done preview videos on every single tank class and I'll drop a link in the description to the playlist for all 6 tank previews. And once again, I'd like to stress that for the majority of the player base, I think all 6 tank classes are capable of doing the content you envision. There is still room for class tuning in the road ahead, so I would definitely pay attention to that and I will pin my comments below to give my latest thoughts as we get more class tuning changes. I'm also very curious about what you are intending to main for the Shadowlands, so please share your thoughts in the comments below as well. I would love to read them. Lastly, I hope this video was helpful in helping you sort out your thoughts when it comes to picking your main. I know it's a big decision and one that should not be taken lightly. If you found this video helpful, do subscribe to my channel, I publish daily Shadowlands content on this channel. A very big thank you for watching this video, and for all the support in the past few months. This community has grown so fast that it really surprises me. It's been great getting to know everyone, and I hope to see you in the next video.